So, you guys know that last week I went to a place called Salon Privé for the incredible event that was the concourse there, where people were just basically showing off their cars, you know, classic cars, the best restored one, the best, the, the most unique one, things, things like that, basically. But there were some really cool stalls around the area as well, and some very, very nice cars. Now, one of the stalls near the front of the event that I got to speak to someone pretty high up there was, uh, was Petroil Restorations. And I managed to speak to a guy called Greg, the managing director of the company, about basically what they do when it comes to restoring cars and some of the cars that they restored. And, and he was really, really nice. He let me go around and really try out some of these cars. I mean, the coolest one for me probably was one of these really, really old Land Rovers that was there. That really stood out against like the supercars and the hypercars and, and all and all these incredible luxury vehicles. Seeing something so rugged like that and in such good nick as well. Like he actually belonged to a Duke or something like that. Someone really high up in um, kind of the aristocracy so you know someone who's someone who as we say in the UK is minted and you know he's, he's spent his money wisely really restoring that because it's incredible incredible condition so I'm just going to play the interview for you guys here like with the other ones as well the audio quality is not going to be the best and it is an audio only interview I'll overlay some footage of some of their cars while me and Greg are speaking about them but yeah like I said not, not the best audio quality just because we were outside it was you know we had cars coming past and everything like that but Hopefully it's all right for you guys and you get to find out a bit about how people restore these classic cars because it is a very interesting process and something that is kind of overlooked really. People just kind of accept that cars have always been the way they are but you know like anything they kind of wear out over time so restoring them to their former glory is something that is very cool. Go ahead. So the Ford Escort, we've not actually done anything to that yet. So that's been in a barn for what is it 14 years? 14 years. Wow. So we've restored a Singer Gazelle. An Aston Martin DB6, and we're in the, the middle of an uh, MGB restoration for this chap. Mm. And this is his other car, which has never been painted, never had any work done to it at all, not even been run for 14 years. As you can see, it's like. And the story behind it is he was a manager of a Ford dealership workshop, and there was some sort of special deal going on them, and he decided he was, that's one he was going to buy. And so he bought it from new, and he's kept it ever since. Wow. And interestingly, the RS wheels were in the accessory shop, and they were fitted in the showroom. So as far as I'm concerned, they're factory fitted, those RS wheels. Very cool. Okay, much better than that, yeah. 27,000 miles, and if you look inside, you can tell it's... Let's have a look, yeah? <laughs> yeah, like new. Yeah, just like out of the factory. Yeah, even <laughs> smells, apparently, how they did new. Yeah, it's got a certain... Smells like my old loft in, loft in my old house it or something. Like... Yeah, I did it. It's not quite new car smell, it's old attic smell. I don't know, but anyway, it's, it looks very fresh, looks very nice. Yeah, so yeah, uh, so we'll, it's just like commissioning of this one. We have not dared start it, obviously, because of the cam belt. Yeah. Um, so we'll replace the cam belt. A general check over and hopefully it shouldn't need a whole lot other than new tires and mm. probably anything made of rubber yeah it's a good one there we go yeah not bad for 14 years in a in a shed or a barn of white ones yeah so this is a porsche 912 mm. bought off the collecting cars auction site yeah burgundy came to us and it looked okay um but what we found in it was lots of filler lots lots of um, bad welding work mm. um and that was the start of a, a 200 grand restoration yeah Wow. Which still isn't. Um, What's left still to do? Yeah. Uh, mainly interior, running, snagging, stuff like that. Um, so all the hard, most of the hard work has been now. Uh, Roger Bray, three five specialist. Um, mm. Obviously, the same engine, so it's a constructor, Lily 1.8, upgraded Weber downdraft carbs, which will all give it a little bit more. Um, and lots of different exterior styling to the customer's tastes. Yeah. Widened steel wheels. Yeah, I heard about it. The friend was saying that as well that, you know, not all of these are factory restored. These have got cert they have certain little changes compared yeah. to what it was originally, just to make it easier to drive or whatever yeah. they want, really. Yeah, some of the cars we do, I mean, the, the E-Type is probably as close to factory as you can get, and they're um, very keen on that, and they want to stick with the original. Yeah. Down to matching the suspension components to the nickel cadmium that would have been done, which you now can't get done. We've tried to match paint to look like that. All the brake pipes, the fuel pipes are all Cunifer, but we've had them BZP plated to make them look like steel, so they look original again, but they're not. So yeah, there's real attention to detail on that one. Again, nearly done. Probably £300,000 plus restoration, that one. But um, been in the family for a long time, and they're, they're over the moon. And, and I can see why. And not a lot of people have ever done that to a 2 plus 2, so probably one of the best 2 plus 2s in the world, if not the best one. 
would imagine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, that, Where's yeah. what, what's, what with the bodywork and the wheels? And have those not been completed yet? Or? Yeah, the wheels. We just took the wheels off so you can see all round yeah. suspension and the braking and all that sort of stuff, just to see the attention to detail. Interior-wise, it's not been done yet. Seats are currently being retrimmed. Yeah, and then again, that's running, snagging, and then that'll be done as well. So we're, we're nearly there with that. I'd say 80% of the way there. It's a shame it's not a little bit more incomplete, and then you could see even more of the little details. But there's just the positions they were in when when we decided to come to the show. Today. Yeah. Uh, so the Land Rover, that's the Duke of Marlborough. So that was bought by the current Duke who you see around here. He's judging today. Oh, um, right. That's bought by his granddad. Right, yeah. And then passed down to his dad. And then Wait, passed down what to year him. is it? It's 50, I think it's a 59 or something. I can't remember the exact year. Yeah. But it's obviously old. Oh, I can, I can tell that, yeah. <laughs> series 2. When was Series 2? I think it's late 50s. Yeah. So, they, so the current Duke bought this to us about six years ago now. Yeah. We thought it needed like a little bit of welding on the chassis and then just sort of a mechanical re- recommissioning. We ended up replacing most of the chassis. Yeah. Um, but it is still the original chassis, so it's all matching. Um, repaired some damage shunt on the left-hand side mm. front, which was damaged the chassis. And then it was mechanical, so relatively straightforward on those. They're like mechanic kit, really. But we love it. And if you look inside... Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Never. No, no. That's what they were. They like the galvanised paintings, all original. There's loads of. Um... Oh wow! Look at this. So you're gonna come around. I'll get a video for you guys in a little bit. I'll probably splice it over the top of this, so you're already seeing what I'm seeing. It's uh... so... cars have changed a lot. <laughs> So, I mean, a lot of that painting there is original. Um, yeah. You know, the mats are original, the seats are new. But we try to retain as much of the sum of it so that, you know, it's not all completely fresh. And you can see the years that it's been just driven around this estate, which yeah. I think is really cool. Absolutely. Um, and he was not kind enough to let us uh, have it on our stand. Three seats in the front as well. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a van. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. So, that's so you, this has been in your care for like six years, did you say you've been working on this? Or? I mean, we did all that work and then we haven't actually touched it since. Oh, it's right. been in his garage and he's barely driven it. Yeah. Um, we, we, he asked us to come and get it going for him again because he's having issues with it starting. Yeah. Um, but it just turned out that the fuel primer was all dried up and everything. Yeah. Two, two minute job and it's all working again. It runs. It runs great. Simple tech at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And we, we put so much effort into it six years ago that I mean, it'd be good for another 20. I mean, I think probably between the Dukes, I think at some points it's probably been quite abused, and it is, but it's still you know held up to it. It's and the kind of car that could probably take a bit of that, to be yeah. fair. Yeah, and I think now it's so far away from what all of us, especially the Dukes, used to driving that yeah. probably he's not going to put a whole lot of miles on it because mm. they're not the comfiest things to use. So it'll stay <laughs> like this forever. Well, mint continue, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we done. So these Porsches, these are part of company collection. So my business partner, he's got about twelve cars. He's, he loves Porsches, mm. the 993, and he's always he always wanted um, a 993 Carrera RS, which is probably the third rarest one there is. Yeah. And on the day he went to buy this one, which is just the RS, mm. um, still a very special car yeah. in its own right. Obviously, it's sort of like a legal road car, but it doesn't have a roll cage or anything. He went to buy this. The Club Sport was also for sale. Um, so th- they're almost identical um, in many ways, mm. but the club sport is extra special um well that's so got that's got the roll cage in the back yeah, you can see it there cage, yeah there's differences in engines exhaust it's rides a little bit absolutely no sound deadening mm. so you can't hear yourself talking <laughs> at all i think they're both surprisingly usable on the road yeah like considering they're not really made for it mm. the yellow one especially is pretty comfy to go. but both very special cars and to be part of the same collection must be can't be many people with both of them Probably not given the rarity, no. So yeah, um, there's nothing to. Uh, neither of them have covered more than 15,000 miles. No work needed on them. We'll just look after them. You no know, routine servicing and anything else they need. Awesome. But yeah, part of his collection, and it's, it's a very eclectic collection. Anything from pre-war stuff all the way up to yeah. 90s Porsches, even the later stuff as possible. Yeah, real nice, real nice collection, and it's great. That it's part of the business. It gives us access to some really cool stuff that we can show off. So yeah, that's us. Fair enough. I've got to give you, you know, a chance to shout yourself out. So who do you work for? And, it's uh, it's <laughs> Petroil Restorations. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're a classic car enthusiast and you need some uh, need some work doing, hit these guys. Thank you very much, Greg. You're welcome. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview from Salon Privé and for much more content on the world of motoring and motorsport, do keep it tuned right here to themotoringchronicle.com. Like, share, comment, subscribe and ring the bell as well to see much more video content just like this.